Hey everyone, how's it going? The long awaited video on how to do heat calculations for radiators to put them back in your house or put them in a new construction, whatever you want to put them into, <laughs> to actually have them work like they're supposed to. So, the first thing you do is you measure your ra whatever radiators you have. These sets right here are actually two separate radiators, not four. You see the variation in the color and the paint. But that doesn't really matter when you're doing this way when you have to start from scratch. So what you do is you measure across the back of the radiator, the top. You measure the width, and then you measure the height, including the legs. And write that down. You can also sit down here and calculate, count, count the individual ribs. And count all them and uh, get a calculation that way and i'll show you a way to get calculations on either way this just gives you an idea of what you're doing how many radiators you have what different styles you have fortunately i only have three different styles so i have this this is the raku 38 inches same with those those are the same ones but that taller one on the back is still a raku but it's a uh, it's a taller radiator then we have this long black one right here which is a different type. It's the same family as this one. So let's get started. Okay, now that we've calculated up all our radiators, let me scroll back up here. We need to get our dimensions of our rooms. So you gotta run, go around and measure all your rooms by feet. So, to get your, your square footage of your room, you do width, length times width, and then get your square footage. And that's important. BTUs don't come into play yet. But you have all your radiators lined up here. And the way I figured out what style these were and how many square footage each radiator was, you take the length and width and you look up that information in this book very nice book when you're doing this work so I found the radiator they have pictures of dang near every radiator in here these look like they're the pictures from the salesman sample from when they were per built in 1906 or 1916 sorry and then what you do is you take that that measurement so the first one is 17 and a half and that's the length of it it wasn't a very big radiator so we'll go 17 and a half here Hold on, let me get his finger where was I 17 and a half here and we go over to 38, as you can see there, and that'd be 35. So that's how many foot per, per foot square set. It's how many square feet that it has. So 35. And then I know it's the Rocco, and I know what year it's from. I also know that uh, it's 10 square feet per two ribs. So that's where I get right here most of my radiators are all about the same height as I showed in there there's a couple ones the, the lower ones like that one and that one they're calculated the same way so now that we have that that gives us one piece we can go to this website and calculate what uh, depending on what zone you're in, to calculate how much uh, load that you're going to need, how much BTUs you're going to need to be able to, to heat your house. So I'm in the blue. And uh, I can go down here and select blue. Less than standard insulation. Probably uh, more windows than usual. Single pane, not perfectly sealed. Then if you're in kitchen, how many people are in the house. So you could say, since... We'll say four for now. 
Then we'll say the space is 250 square feet and the ceiling height is 9.5 feet. That's how much is telling you that you're in need for BTUs. That's the cooling load. Um, it should be pretty close to what you need for, for heat. So we get 9,000 BTU based on that equipment capacity. So you do that through for each room, and then write them down on your Excel spreadsheet. So that's what I have here. Then how do I get this number? Well, in this book, they show you at the beginning of the book what uh, water temp you'll be running, and then how many square or how many BTUs per square that your your water will produce. So I said 160 degree water, it'll produce 130 BTUs per square. So you divide 103 or 100, 130 into 13,300 and you get 103 uh, square feet that you need to have in there. So now that we have that, I can go over here to the radiators and I got my square feet here in those radiators. But I can go one more that way and I can go to 10 square feet per two ribs. So for every rib is basically five, five square feet of heating capacity with this radiator. So I can calculate that up and calculate how many ribs I'm going to need to make that radiator and make it perfectly sized for that room. So hopefully that makes sense. I know that radiator is going to be huge. There's probably going to be two radiators in that room. I think it's always been undersized. But it also depends on how I do the, the hall. Because I could, the hall is a big open space. You know, it's it's going to take a lot of heat to, to heat that area. But the way the old timers heated it, they had one radiator at the bottom of the stairs and one radiator at the top. And the one at the top wasn't very big because all that heat goes up to the, the top. On hindsight, since you've calculated out the the heat rating that you need, or the 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 uh, square foot that you need out of those radiators, you could figure out how big of a radiator you need to have to fit in the spots that were already done by the previous uh, previous uh, installers. And that would be interesting. I know most people have will have two holes on one side and nothing on the other side because that, that's because they piped it around the radiator and came back and dumped it down. Um, some of them are that way here, not all of them. But, you know, you're just thinking, what, what can you do to replace what was here? So you could figure out technically what the height was to the style that you want to use that was pro appropriate for your time. And... Uh, Get a radiator size that if you can find that you might be able to find that on uh, uh, architectural salvage places things of that sort sometimes you see them on craigslist that's where i f or not craigslist but a uh, facebook marketplace that's where i found uh these groupings of radiators someone was, un was removing them and installing forced air so that left me a chance to i got the boiler and i got all the radiators for a pretty reasonable price i could have all the piping and everything if i wanted it but i'm gonna I'm going to go a different route with that. So I'll be doing PEX or copper and then uh, I'll plumb all the radiators that way. And using half inch or three quarter, probably half inch. Because you don't need, you don't need, uh, you don't need the, the gravity fed system because they use larger pipes for that transfer to happen. So you're using a pump down in the basement now. It's, that's pretty common with, with coiler systems. It's going to force the water through. So really you can get quite a bit more, more water through those pipes, through a smaller pipe than you could through a gravity fed system. Plus it'll be more efficient and you'll carry more temperature. Anyway, I hope that helps. So this is first floor done. 
And really, if you can, get this book. It's well worth its weight in gold. Thanks for watching, and uh, please rate, comment, subscribe.